Hey there, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today I want to talk about a video about a topic uh, that is a very controversial one in the watch community space uh, among collectors and enthusiasts. And it's a video that was recently released by Paul Thorpe uh, titled How to Make Your Kids Rich Buying Rolex Watches. Now, Paul is a former watch dealer uh, based out of the UK. And uh, he has a, a sizable YouTube presence and is in the know with a lot of the other current watch dealers out there. And look, Paul has forgotten more about watches and Rolex watches than, than I will ever, ever know. Uh, but there are a couple of things about this video that I take umbrage uh, with. And, uh, you know, I am not a financial advisor. And so none of what I'm going to say uh, should be constituted as financial advice. But Paul is also not a financial advisor, and I think I want to start that there. Um, he begins the video uh, saying that this is probably the, going to be the most important video that you've ever watched. So a little bit trying to draw you in, a little, little clickbaity kind of like discussion talking there. And uh, he, he mentions how you, this video is going to go over certain things that, that, that can help you secure your children's future and even possibly your grandchildren's future. Um, but there's one caveat, there's one downside to it. And, and this is where I, at this point in the video, and I'll put a link to his video in the description uh, below. This is where I was hoping that, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna reveal that he's not a financial advisor and none of this should be constituted as financial advice. And, and that maybe this particular video is not for everyone, but maybe for a small, group of people who can, you know, financially uh, do this, right? Um, but, but he whiffs at that attempt, right? He, he, uh, he actually says that the downside is that you may not live long enough to see the fruits of, of your uh, financial labor, uh, that it's going to be a selfless act for, uh, for the benefit of your children and your grandchildren. And look, I think Paul has had some good intentions here, but I think you know, I think he's a little bit off base. I think actually he's a, a lot off base. Now, he goes through 10 uh, particular secrets, he calls it, on how to invest in Rolex and guarantee um, financial success, basically, and a financial future of, of, of your kids. And, uh, and I, have a, I have a huge issue with this, right? Um, as, as an enthusiast and as a collector first, uh, I don't uh, view watches as an investment Albeit, you know, there have been times uh, in my case and, and certainly some of the people that I know that they have sold watches and made some money. Now, let's talk about that a little bit because it was not always that way. Uh, people bought watches because they needed a watch or they liked collecting and they wanted to keep buying more watches. It was never seen as an investment per se. Sure, once in a while, once in a blue moon, you would see somebody in Antique Roadshow with a watch that was very, very collectible and, uh, you know, could be sold for great sums of money. But that was not necessarily an expectation or, or, or definitely not something that you asp aspired for, right? I think what happened, what has happened in the last couple of years has really um, warped our perception or some people's perception about luxury goods in general and specifically luxury watches and the potential rate of return that you can get from there. Now, when quarantine started, we were all stuck at home and then we were all pumped with financial stimulus. So we had a lot of money to burn and nowhere to go. And luxury watches and crypto and all these kind of, you know, um, fly by night kind of schemes started to happen, right? And people started uh, to uh, buy watches, buy Rolex here, because he, and we're talking about Rolex specifically because Paul brought it up in his video uh, and realized that with sports models, they got in demand. Um, there was, you know, uh, you couldn't find them in the shelves or you had to develop a um, more of a robust uh, purchase history with a with an authorized dealer. You I mean, you had to buy a lot of jewelry to get it. And so people were flipping them in a secondary market, making two times, three times their money, depending on which uh, sports model, Rolex sports model it was, right? Even Datejust were going 
over um, and uh, over over list as well as um, uh, an OP, right? You know, like uh, the, the the Tiffany, which uh, which went for a ridiculous amount of money for for a while, and it's probably still being traded over um, uh, list just because it, it, it's discontinued. Um, but anyway, so the, these kind of times, they're not going to last forever, right? And so the video makes it seem like anybody uh, can do this uh, if you buy a Rolex. Now, here's the thing, like, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, it took me a while to get my, my Submariner. And that's probably one of the easier sports models uh, to be able to get, like, you know, getting a Pepsi uh, GMT, getting a, a Sea Dweller. Uh, Daytona for sure. I mean, these watches are all nearly impossible to get without any, any kind of history or without waiting maybe years potentially. Most of us will not see these watches in our lifetime. And if and if you wanted to leave, make your kids rich, right, leave them a lot of money. I mean, think about how many multiple pieces that you would need to buy in order to do that. And, and some of them may not, you may not hit pay dirt with, right? You know, the, there's the adage where, well, with Rolex, at least, you know, you know, you could get your money back if it doesn't work out. And, and that statement, you know, when I thought about that, it's actually not true. If I, if I bought a Submariner a couple of years ago for $8,100 and I sell it five years from now, 10 years from now from $8,100, yeah, seemingly I got my money back, but with inflation, I actually didn't get my money back, right? I lost money. So even that adage is a little bit tricky. Your, your Submariner would still have to increase over time. And we're seeing the prices in a secondary for the Submariner come down a little bit more down to earth there. I mean, so most cases, if it's in really great condition, it's only a couple of years old, it is trading above retail, but these are not game changers uh, for the financial uh, success uh, or financial windfall for your children or your grandchildren, right? So I, I wish Paul would have narrowed it down and said that this is not necessarily for everybody. Now, I am not judging anybody who may see Rolex or luxury watches as an asset class. Everybody, you know, uh, has the right to do whatever their money with their money. Um, but uh, not all of us can afford to do that in the sense that, you know, uh, we don't have that kind of discretionary income just to dump in watches and then putting them in the safe somewhere and hoping that something good happens, right? Many of us take the strategy of uh, stocks, right? 401k plans uh, contributing to that, right? Uh, real estate, uh, perhaps precious metals. Uh, there's so many other avenues of investment that have decades upon hundreds and thousands of years. So like, you know, thousands of years, gold, for example, has been used as currency, as money, as a store of wealth for thousands of years, right? Stocks, hundreds of years easily, right? Um, starting in the 15, 1600s with, uh, with, uh, with ships, right? So, you know, a huge track record here, right? Uh, and still, that is not a guarantee that you're going to get great rates of return on your investments, right? I mean, it's a long-term hold. Uh, viewing uh, watches as an asset class um, is is really just a recent phenomenon with no real history. Um, and that's another thing I disagree with Paul, and he says that there is a track record. Well, there is a track record with certain watches, um, but not as many as you would think. Not We're not talking game-changing stuff here. Right. I mean, you may get lucky and you may get a Paul, find Paul Newman um, uh, um, uh, Rolex um, Daytona in, 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 in your great uncle's collection. And yes, that's worth millions of dollars. But that that is more of the exception and not the norm, uh, per se. Right. So, um, you know, he wraps up the video. You know, saying if you if you've taken his sage advice, right, and have bought a 1970s Daytona Gold Daytona, um, you'd be you know you'd be a millionaire right now, and and that's that's a, that's a funny statement, and that's a, that's a that's hindsight 2020, right? I mean, if if I told you right now, giving you 2023 advice, if you had bought Amazon 
if or or, or uh, invested a thousand dollars in Amazon in 1997 with the IPO, you'd be a million right now. Of course, you would be. I mean, I could see it. Anybody could see that after the fact. Um, and so, you know, applying that to a 70s Rolex Daytona is is kind of it's it's over the top, right? And look, back in the 70s. You know, people were probably not collecting watches as investments, uh, you know, so that that wouldn't be an advice that somebody would give somebody in the 70s when it's important, not in 2023. Uh, you know, it was important then. And I doubt anybody was giving that advice uh, to somebody buying a gold um, Daytona. If that, you know, you get your money's worth in gold. Uh, so nobody, nobody saw things that way. Um, nobody has a crystal ball. I mean, like if we did, you know, I would have, uh, you know, bet that the New England Patriots would have won six uh, Super Bowl championships in the, in the late 90s. I would say I would make that bet or that Kim and Kanye would never work out. Right. Um, anyway, look, I, I, this is a, a really hot topic here and I would love to hear your advice or your, your comments. Uh, no, not, not advice, please. No, no, no advice. <laughs> uh, no financial advice is not about financial advice, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Do you see luxury watches? Do you see Rolex as an asset class and, and really, really why? And would you put your money where your mouth is like really seriously put your money where your mouth is, take your money out of your form. Okay. Take some money out, right? Sell like a little piece of property sell some you know gold coins or, or silver bars and put it into rolex would you actually do that um anyway i i just don't take financial advice from from youtubers please do not as if that's any advice that i can give you don't take my advice and don't take anybody's advice if you're looking to make investments you know talk to somebody who is a professional financial advisor or somebody who has a license at least right um, and, and as a baseline, you know, I mean, there's other people in your life that, that you can look for advice from, you know, as a, as a mentor, financial mentor, possibly. Um, but, uh, you know, don't, don't be looking at YouTube for, for that kind of stuff. And, and again, this is not a slight against Paul. I'm sure Paul really believes what he's saying and, uh, and, you know, and he means well, um, but it was a little bit of a dangerous video to do. Um, he had to have, I would have added some major caveats to to whatever I was going to give advice about, you know, uh, make sure that you have money ready to lose, you know, not because you're never going to see it because your kids are going to enjoy it because you actually could lose it, you know, invest in other things first before you start investing in luxury goods and luxury watches because there is no history. There is no real uh, data and history there. Uh, all the data that might be coming out is all hindsight, right? It's not in the moment. It's not in the 1970s when you're thinking about buying a Rolex for, for investment purposes. You, you would never do that. You would never do that at the time. So it's really, really dangerous to say, if you take my advice now to do that then, that you would have a million dollars. It's very, very dangerous to say those kind of things. Anyway, like I said, love to hear your comments below. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.